Good evening, dear Anselm. So now I'm with you in the spirit on the Endum. I'm sure you're just having a stroll on deck and I'll come by with you. Sadly, I'm rather late, so I've missed the sunset, which I'm sure was splendid. But it doesn't matter. It's nice just being with you. Or you may be sitting in your cabin writing or thinking of me. I shall sit down beside you and hold your dear hand. When will it really happen, Anselm? At present, we would have been satisfied with being together in our thoughts, but knowing we are is nice too. I wouldn't like to give it up. I have my own idea of what your cabin is. I wonder if it looks like this. When you come in the door, your desk is opposite on the left, at an angle in the corner. At the left of it is a little window to the ship, and to the right of the desk, one which looks out onto the sea. That's how I imagine it, which of course may be quite wrong, but that doesn't matter, because I've grown so fond of this picture, as I am with you so often in this cabin, as I am now. I can see before me the waxing moon as an hour crescent. I wonder if you're watching it too. There, Anselm, now I've at least sat with you for a while, and now I must leave you again in your cabin. Sleep well, my dear best Anselm, and dream of your Maria. Dear May, I was pleased to hear that you had received my card and badge all right, and I am enclosing one of the buttons off my tunic. It went jet black the other day, all my buttons were as we went through the gas chamber. A chamber filled with the poison gas they use at the front. Of course we had our gas helmets on and the only effect it had on us was to turn everything that we had on us that was metal jet black. Even the money in our pockets. And I'm sorry to say that I forgot to take that ring off and it has changed the colour of it. But it is coming round a little bit now, the same as this button. Dear May, you say you wanted to speak to me about something last Thursday, but I don't quite know what you mean. I'm afraid it was a bit sharp, the parting, but... Never mind, the war can't last forever, and it'll be a good job when it's all over and we can return to dear old Accrington again. Now, I must close this, and hoping this finds you and all at home in the best of health, as it leaves me and the boys at present. I remain yours ever true, Jim. Dear love, no mail today. It's been a quiet day, little work and lovely frosty weather. I've been playing bridge in the mess, and it's so, I'm, it's so cold that I'm chilled through. So I'm sitting over the fire to write you a few lines before I go to bed. Dear heart, I want you so. I'm tired of so much masculine companionship and I long for, to have my own little woman to talk to every day. Before I met you, I used to love the freedom and camaraderie of camp life, but now I hate it all and long for you. Ah, oh, my own darling, I hope I'll be with you soon. You're so sweet and loving and lovely and I long to pet and cuddle you and admire you. For the second time, I'm beginning to believe that our marriage was only a lovely dream. When we're separated so much, it's hard to believe that all those lovely honeymoon nights really happened. I long for our third honeymoon. I want to play with you, fondle you, and then seduce you, and then admire you and hug you and fondle you again. And then when you are shivery, to warm you under the bed sheets until you're ready for more fondling. Ah, oh, my own love, I'm aching to have you in my arms again. All my heart is yours, and I pray for you always. God bless your ever-loving Douglas.